بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم everyone so today's lecture is about large amplitude control potential techniques and before we start this lecture you need to keep that in mind that you need to thoroughly study the material which was actually given in the last few lectures and you need to go through all the readings and then you need to actually check all the videos that are uploaded and after that it will be easier for you to understand the things that we are going to study afterwards mm -hmm. now this lecture over here uh, is about large amplitude controlled potential techniques and as clear from the topic we are looking at some techniques over here which is actually the part of the course electroanalytical chemistry so basically we are looking at ele electroanalytical techniques so here we will be talking about the techniques in which we have large amplitude potential or we have large amplitude current and the techniques which are based upon that type of impulse so before we start that we need a little background and for that you can see that we have you already know that although but just to remind you that we have three modes of mass transportation and these are very well known modes one is diffusion which you can see over here diffusion and the other one is migration and the other one is convection so clearly diffusion is something which is related to a concentration a concentration gradient and you can see that there is a portion where concentration is quite high and then there is another portion where the concentration is quite low and the movement is taking place from high concentration to low concentration and this type of movement is actually created due to the concentration gradient which is present similarly there is another mode which is migration and basically from migration we mean that we have certain ions which are present and these ions are affected by the electric field which is applied and due to that electric field these ions move in a certain direction so again this is another mode of mass transport and then we have another mode which is convection so convection is actually taking place due to movement or due to vibration or due to certain things which are happening with the electrode and then resultingly what is present inside the solution so due to that the ions which are present in solution will change its position and come or go near to a certain part of the solution or say to electrode so let's say if this is electrode so these ions which are present over here which we are looking at in three dimension can move anywhere and similarly the same thing can happen to these ions which are present over here depending on what kind of impulse they are provided so from these we can see that there are three modes of mass transport which are present if we look at the definitions we can see that diffusion is the spontaneous movement under the influence of concentration gradient from regions of high concentration to region of low concentration aimed at minimizing concentration differences of say concentration gradients similarly the convection is the transport to the electrode by a gross physical movement such as fluid flow occur or occurring within the due to the stirring or flow of solution and with rotation or vibration of electrodes so basically that cause forced convection or due to density gradients or you can say the natural convection and the third mode is the migration mode which is the movement of charged particle due to the influence of electric field 
that is the charge is carried through the solution by ions according to their transference number now we can see that another important concept over here is the ohms law from ohms law we know that v is equal to i r and we know that this is potential difference this is current and then this one is the resistance so we can also write that so this is also another way of writing the same law now we can see that if we have two resistors which are given over here one resistor is this one and the other one is this one then we see a linear relation in which the line is passing through the origin although the angle is different due to the large resistance and the small resistance but still this type of behavior in the iv curve is called the ohmic behavior or we can say that this is following ohms law so we observe ohmic behavior now if we have a diode or a battery then the similar type of behavior is not observed and it is not obeying the ohms law and we see that here we don't have a linear relation in this case and then in this case the line is not passing through the origin so there is an ohmic behavior and then there is a non ohmic behavior ohms law is followed then we say that it is ohmic behavior now this should be kept in mind because these rules will be used in coming slides and they will be important to understand so if we look at our some some at some glimpse from our previous lectures we can see that here when we have small over potentials of order of eta is equal to where this eta is actually the over potential is of the order smaller than 8 millivolt per number of electrons we have this kind of relationship that we get and from this relationship actually we were able to understand admittance and a very important parameter and there very important parameter impedance or faradic resistance which is defined on the basis of these rules now again we can see that here this is a straight line especially when we actually when we plot current versus over potential and this straight line is passing through origin and this is showing an ohmic behavior now this ohmic behavior is of heterogeneous electron transfer at low over potential of this order now again if we have large over potentials that is if we have over potential magnitude greater than 120 millivolts per number of electrons then we get a tefl region and then we get an ohmic region now if we extend this tefl region we get an intercept and this intercept was used to calculate the exchange current density while the ohmic region is deviating from the straight line and due to its actually linear behavior this actually goes to the origin over here and this part is showing the ohmic part of the curve that is for large over potential now in case of large over potentials we also know that if we are working under certain situations that is of non stirred solution or similar solutions then we actually encounter diffusion and this diffusion is coming from the build up of the electrical double layer which is taking place at the electrode solution interface 
So whenever you put the electrode inside a solution which is non-state solution and even before applying the current there will be a build up of bubble layer. Now the diffusion layer that is or the diffusion part or the diffusion layer of this double layer is the part where the uh, concentration or the presence of the oxidized species is depleted because here we are considering a process such that an oxidized species actually take up electron and it goes to a reduced species that is the formation of reduced species is taking place <coughs> now this Formation of reduced species is a result of heterogeneous electron transfer reaction. So, this reaction is partially defining the, not partially, but actually defining the diffusion there. So, what happens? That is, when you apply the potential, then this oxidized species is converted into reduce species. Basically, this is also telling us about the potential step that we have over here. That is, the potential step is such that it, it actually convert this to this reduce species. In other words, the potential step is responsible for the depletion of this oxidized species to reduce species. Now we know that this oxidized species is basically something which is present inside a solution in which the electrode was dipped. Now it means that let's say we can consider that this oxidized species was soluble and it is part of the solution. Now initially at time is equal to zero that is when no potential is applied we say that only oxidized species is only oxidized species is present in the solution that is on the oxidized species is present in the solution now once the potential is applied this oxidized species will start to convert to the reduced species and then this R will become available now the thing is we are talking about the situation that is when before before even this potential was applied there was a double layer present on the electrode solution interface and in that double layer there was a concentration of oxidized species present or we can say that if you remember we talked about something which was CO so CO is basically the surface surface concentration of oxidized species surface mean that on the surface of the uh, electrode or in the diffuse layer. <coughs> now, obviously, once the potential is light, this situation will change. I hope that you understand that what is happening. Now, considering the same situation, let us consider this different concentration profiles. Now, here is the concentration of the oxidized species which is 1 millimolar and this is present when when there was no uh, potential applied and you can see that that this part over here this line over here is the electrode solution interface this is electrode and this one is the solution so initially what we have is the concentration of the oxidized species which is 1 millimolar then the next thing that we have is the concentration of the reduced species which is actually initially 
absent. Now this vertical line, this vertical line over here is giving the concentration of the oxidized and reduced species and this one is giving the distance from the electrode in 10 days per minus 3 centimeters. So here it is increasing and here we are going inside the electrode. Now we have this situation when some potential is applied and what we see is that the oxidized species convert into the reduced species. So obviously since we are talking about the reaction which is taking place at the electrode solution interface, electrode solution interface, therefore the oxidized species convert into the reduced species on the interface which is obviously this part on the interface of the electrode and uh, solution. So the concentration of the reduced species will be maximum near to the electrode and it will decrease as you go away from the electrode. And on the contrary, the concentration of the oxidized species will actually be increasing when you go into the bulk away from the electrode because the concentration of the oxidized species is reducing, it is depleting on the electro electrode solution interface with the application of the potential. So this graph is showing that situation. Now here we can see that that in this case in B part it is the profile of oxygen is given by dashed line and R by solid line at 1, 4 and 10 milliseconds after potential step of ES is applied. Now in this case R is soluble in the solution. So we already said that oxide, oxy, oxidized species is uh, soluble in the, in, the, in the solvent and now we say that the reduced species is soluble in the solvent. So anyway that's why we get this exponential type of curve that there is some the maximum concentration of reduced species is present on the electrode solution interface but obviously since there is absence of reduced species in the bulk initially so therefore we see that the reduced species diffused through the layer into the bulk so therefore there is presence of although decreasing presence of reduced species into the bulk of the solution and an increasing presence of oxidized species into the bulk of solution. Now what happens if we have this reduced species soluble into the electrode we see that in that case the concentration of the reduced species is increasing into the electrode with time that is inside the electrode more into the or it is penetrating more into the electrode with time but if you look at the oxidized species the situation remains same now the d is showing that what happens if the potential is stepped from es to ef that is at 10 at tau is equal to 10 milliseconds so that oxidation of r to O is now diffusion control. So what do we mean by diffusion control and what do we understand by that? Now you can easily see that when we have that kind of reaction which we already written that is the heterogeneous electron transfer which is taking place and is responsible for the formation of the reduced species. Then Basically, diffusion control will mean that once the potential is stepped, that is it is applied, then all of the oxidized species will convert into the reduced species. It means that there will be no presence of oxidized species on the interface. So what happens that some of the oxidized species 
diffuse through the layer electrical double layer into the electrode solution interface and as soon as it enters it is converted into the reduced species so as much as oxidized species can diffuse at the same rate the formation of the reduced species will take place so now this formation after it happen will create different type of situations like the one we saw over here in which there was solubility of the uh, oxidized and reduced species in the solvent and not in electrode and then there was the solubility of reduced species into the electrode and not of the oxidized species and then this third uh, situation where the potential is stepped and the reduced species is also soluble in the electrode. So these kind of situation can be observed. Now moving from here we can see that that <coughs> we can have in this type of situation when large amplitude control potential or control current is applied and there would be techniques which will be depending on that analytical techniques and that will be mostly explained by the non-linear region where the current is exponentially related to the power potential. Now this type of situations have application in analytical techniques and also in the studies of the coupled reaction that we explained in the last lecture that you can see again from the playlist. Now I already told you that what is the potential step. So potential step is basically when you apply a potential initially so that all of the oxidized species is converted into the reduced species and then so why is that happening so you apply a step and finally it is back to the zero potential so it means that it is initially increasing in a step a step is taken step is such that all the oxidized species is converted into the reduced species and then it is back to the zero potential it means that the potential is applied in kind of pulses which is actually causing a certain type of response. So stationary solutions or quiescent solution or non stirred solutions is another condition for such techniques. So we will be looking at non stirred solutions in which the electrical double layer is built up in a certain way. Now the three techniques that have the similar type of situation are chronoamperometry, chronocolometry and chronoabsorbometry which actually demonstrate same type of response and same type of impulse is given under the conditions. So we will see that how they are defined over here. Now chronoamperometry is a time dependent technique where a square wave potential is applied to the working electrode. The current of the electrode measured as a function of time and it fluctuates according to a diffusion of analyte from the bulk solution towards the sensor surface. And here again we can understand that sensor sensor surface is actually Sensor surface is actually also the electrode surface. Now chronoamperometry can therefore be used to measure current time dependence for the diffusion control process occurring at the electrode. This varies with the analyte concentration. Now we will see an example of that, that how it is happening. You can see that here it is the initial situation, then the potential is stepped and then it is maintained like this and the response is measured over the time. Now you can see that what is happening at different times.
Now this is the concentration of the oxidized species and this is the distance from the electrode and this is the concentration of the reduced species. Again the reduced species is forming on the surface of the electrode while the oxidized species is converted to the reduced species. Now the detail of this can be studied from this link which is given over here. So the next technique over here is the chronocodometry. It is similar to chronoamperometry except that the current is integrated and the variation of charge with time is studied. The advantage of integration are that the signal increase with time facilitating measurements toward the end of the transient when the current is almost zero. Integration is effective in reducing signal noise. It is relatively easy to separate the capacitive charge from the faradic charge which is an important point over here that is separation of capacitive charge and the faradic charge. So now we have an example of a double potential step chrono Imperometry and chrono one here, but there is also with a single step chrono imperometry. Which we saw in the previous example again, the detail actually can be checked over here. Right now, I will not go into detail. So, the third type I also show the third type, which is chrono absorptometry, in which. Um, which electrodes which are used are uh, transparent and actually the response is current voltage response but it is uh, stimulated by light so since the electrodes have those transparency for light that transparency for light therefore the response along with the stimuli from light can also be noted. So I will stop it here, I will not go into detail right now but uh, in the coming lectures we will be looking at some details of these techniques and hopefully uh, the things will become more understandable or more interesting uh, regarding these techniques that we have just saw over here and it also shows that how uh, large controlled large potential techniques are important and how actually they leads to uh, certain applications that is in sensors and in different analytical techniques there are some very interesting research topics which are based on these type of studies anyway thanks for now and we will continue on later.